A lot of people are coming and a lot of them are having confessions and uh, are asking uh, help from you. So could you tell us something about uh, uh, more ordinary problems of people here and uh, what they are asking from you, what uh, stories they are telling you and most of all uh, what you are giving them as, a, as advice, as a help, as a... This is, this is a good question to ask. First of all, people come from all, all different backgrounds. And the problems, the burdens that people in the United States have, perhaps are different in some ways from the people, Orthodox people in Serbia. Here, our culture is a very uh, mm, pluralistic culture. Miss many people are from families where the relatives are not Orthodox Christians. Uh, other people are looking for uh, even questioning whether they have a call to the monastic life. Other people want to spend some time in an Orthodox monastery where there are services in the English language, where, for example, we have not only uh, the Vespers and Divine Liturgy, but the Matin service on the feast days, all night vigils. And then people also especially come to monasteries for confession. Now this is not simply to go around their parish priest or to avoid confessing to their parish priest, but also to, on a deeper level, to experience a time of quiet and uh, prayer. And so people come to the monastery with, often with serious burdens. And after a few days of prayer, of living, of attending all the church services, of being, of being isolated from their busy schedule, from the big cities, buses, noise, uh, factories, their cell telephones, from being apart from that for a while, entertainment, distraction, they begin to look more deeply inside themselves. And often, after cleaning off the surface, they see there's some deep things in there that they've never addressed before. So people come. They come to a monastery, first of all, to repent, to pray, to ask prayers of the monks. Some people, for example, have children or loved ones on drugs. Their close friends are going on through divorce. Uh, someone's making a major change of plans in their life. And so our job is, first of all, to listen. People need to know that another human being will listen to them. That the church will listen to them. That the church cares about their life. That their interests are important to the rest of the church. And our life is not only about silence and prayer. It's not only about the church services, the daily cycle of services, the the feasts of the year. It's not only about spiritual reading or fasting. It's also about keeping the commandments of God, which are ultimately, first of all, love of God and love of neighbor. And so often we have to question people that come, especially in confession. But some of the primary questions are, are they able to forgive everyone? Is there someone they can't forgive? Is there something that they can't, that they have a difficulty in confessing? Uh, other things that are important are, how do, how do they deal with anger? Is there some passion that is eating up their life? So we, we begin to help them understand accountability. As a priest is accountable to a bishop, a husband and wife are accountable to each other, a layman is accountable to their parish priest. People need to give an account of their life, how they are living. And often this takes place for some people, first of all, at a monastery. One of the 
Uh, one of the best examples of this in literature is, for example, this book which was written by Father Radomir, The uh, Mystery of the Wonder Worker of Ostrog, mm -hmm. that was also translated into English. And this tells about these pilgrimages to Ostrog Monastery and how this man's life was transformed. We see something like this also in this new book that is very popular in, in the United States called The Mountain of Silence by Kyriakos Markidis. He's a professor of sociology. He began to make pilgrimages to Mount Athos and later to Cyprus. And just the theme of going to begin a life of prayer and confession for a modern man has had a big impact. There's also an important book in the Finnish language that was just translated into English about a hermit who lives not very far from Mount Athos on an island. And in it, the boat goes into a cave on this island. And the, from that cave, an elevator goes up to this little area on top of an island that looks abandoned. And there's a little monastery there on the island. And how this man prays and how he's living the spiritual life right there on this deserted island. And so these are the types of things that begin to help people to understand the depths of the spiritual life.